Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over this evening's NHL slate. Um, it's a very, very large slate on a night where there's a very small NBA slate, so I imagine uh, the contest will be very full. Uh, last night we had a very, very good night. We got, I think, fourth in the kick save, and one of the, the lessons to be learned as we continue to learn how to how to combine both the, the regular hand-built lineups with the Saber Sims, Saber score lineups with the um, addition of the contest Sims uh, is that NHL sort of like, like baseball, you have this wide gap between the types of lineups you'll get to when you build just using optimizers and also even Saber score uh, ranked builds on Saber Sim and those that you're going to get when you use the contest simulations. Um, some sports is not that much of a difference between your saber score lineups and your and your uh, and your contest sim lineups, but in hockey and in baseball uh, there are. And I guess the reason for that is is the way results distribute are so event based in in hockey and in baseball for that matter that it, it, chalk is usually not a good thing to be chasing. And, and not only that, but projections are much more fragile um, in those types of sports. So whenever you take into account what you think the rest of the field is playing, uh, it's very, very easy to get very natural leverage against those lineups in sports where all you need is, is one of those high event, uh, one of those high scoring events, and you automatically just destroy, you know, at least theoretically, those other teams. Where in NBA, I mean, it's just kind of hard for, you know, just a couple of things to go your way for you to overcome, which is usually pretty good chalk. I mean, what are you going to do? Get really hot and hit a couple of more baskets? That's not going to be enough. Or as hockey, you get like two goals or even one goal. I mean, that's that could be almost 10 percent of your score. You know, so um, we're going to continue to emphasize, especially in the, uh, the MME contests, the need to run these contest sims. And to prioritize the builds that the contest sim uh, contest sims will produce, as opposed to just relying on the regular optimized uh, lineups. All right, so uh, let's just get started with the same type of uh, analysis we do every single day. When we do this, uh, first we start with with the team totals. We figure out, we'll figure out, we try to guess who's going to be the highest projected uh, players, and I think that's kind of healthy. Not projected players, but projected teams. Then we'll look at the sheets and, and take kind of an individual player look and see if we can't build by hand. And also we're going to take a, a look at the, at the stacks from um, the teams from a, from a stacking perspective and see if we can't build that way. And then we're going to get to the real meat and potatoes and, and do two separate uh, lineup builds, one with the uh, regular Sabre score and the other with um, using the contest sims to see like the different options and the different ways you can approach slates. And again, the overall... Uh, the overarching theme of these videos is I'm trying to teach you not just what to do on this slate. I'm trying to give you a repeatable process that you can use. Was, listen, as long as you have the right tools available, um, where you can not have to come back to these videos, where you can just you know, get a good set of projections, a good uh, optimizer such as Saberson, and obviously with the knowledge of how to use all that stuff. So let's take a look. We have Boston with a 3.4. That's not going to be that much on a big slate. Toronto, 3-5. All right, Tampa, 3-8. We're really looking for like a fourth. It's out there. Boy, even Edmonton can't give you a four, huh? Interesting. Boy, there's no – it takes you all the way until Coors Field, that being San Jose, where you find L.A. with a 4.1 total. Um, that being the last night of the – last game of the night, it's always fun. So that's what we're going to be expecting to see, you know, kind of a, kind of a very spread out uh, – a view of the slate, you know, some Tampa, some Boston, some Toronto, some Devils, some Buffalo, Edmonton, and maybe the Kings will be a little bit better, but it's going to be a slate that, you know, if you're playing MME, you can get a lot of, uh, you can go a lot of different ways. All right, so let's take a look at the, at the sheets here. And again, first thing, we just kind of step back and take a look and, and, see what we can glean from just this real 
what do what you call it? The, uh, the 100,000 foot view, whatever of the slate, without getting into lineup builds or anything like that, we'll, you know, we'll treat it like, what's one of the kids say, uh, uh, explain it to me like I'm five, right? So, so what you want to do is you want to find dudes that uh, rate really well on this list that are from the same team. That's it. Uh, not really it, but that's a good place to start. You want to find guys that rate really well that are also on the same even strength and or power play line. Now, you already see, by the way, there's already a lot of natural correlation to these top 12 guys before you even figure out who they are. So that's not going to be too much of an issue. Uh, so let's just take a look. Actually, the first thing I notice is that you have this $3,500 guy from Buffalo. Um, and right off the bat, I can imagine that these Buffalo stacks are going to be really, really juicy. Um, so you have Benson, Tuck, and you can even pay up for Tage Thompson, this kind of construct. And then also you can go to the second regular line, second even strength line in Paterka, because he's on the first power play line. So without even doing anything, I know that this Buffalo stack is going to be very juicy. Uh, what else do I see? Uh, well, I, I, as usual, you have Rantanen and McKinnon, and you love to play these guys, but they're really, really expensive. It's going to be very, very difficult to get to these guys. But, you know, if you can, terrific. And then you'd probably want to use the shoe skin in here as well. And um, how, how can you do that? Well, we'll, we'll play around with it, but I, I imagine that it's going to involve playing this Benson anyway. I think this Benson, if this projection holds, is going to be probably the most popular, you know, one of the more popular players on the slate. You know, 2,500 on Buffalo's 1-1. One, one, uh, that's pretty, pretty juicy. Um, I also noticed this pretty well-projected defenseman. You don't see this too often, actually. A really well-projected defenseman who is um, uh, on the first line and, you know, pretty cheap. So, $3,900 J.J. Moser is an interesting one off. And I also see that Clayton Keller is rated okay as well, as is Jason Zucker. So this could be actually a pretty nice, cheap compliment. I'm just guessing. Maybe you could even get in Colorado if you play these Arizona guys. So... What else do we have? I mean, we have a one off from Tampa. Doesn't look that great. Edmonton. They don't, they're not really projecting as well as they usually do. Let's, let's take a look at these LAs. And I wonder why they're not really up there. Actually, I don't wonder. I, I, that's not my business to wonder why they don't project well, honestly. So it looks as though just looking at this from a handbill perspective, it's going to be Buffalo would be kind of the main stack. And then Arizona would be another piece of value. So if I were hand building, that's where I would try to start. Uh, we could try to play Colorado, but I don't think we're going to be able to afford it. So let's, uh, before we actually build this, let's um, let's look at the stacks. And when you view the stacks, there are three different ways you can do it. One is from a raw uh, points perspective. And when you do it this way, Edmonton and Colorado were at the top, followed by Toronto and then Buffalo. When you value them by just rate, uh, regular points per dollar, you have Chicago, actually. Uh, that's interesting. Followed by Buffalo and Arizona or Arizona. We mentioned Arizona is a good value piece, but this uh, Chicago, they rank number one overall, and they're much lower owned. So maybe, maybe if you want to go for value, you'll play Chicago. But Arizona, as we mentioned, looks good. Buffalo looks good. And when you put the two together with modified uh Look at it from a modified stack perspective, then Buffalo is the number one, which should come as no surprise. And also should come as no surprise. It looks to be the highest owned. Okay, let's uh, build by hands and let's do a couple of things. Let's build, um, oh, first, let's get my lineups up here. Yeah, so let's start by, by I think what should be easy and, and build Buffalo. Um, so that would be, as I mentioned, Tage Thompson. Um, who is it? Paterka. Who I forget the guy's names already. This is crazy. Benson. We did talk. Benson Thompson. Paterka. So Benson. 
Where's Tuck? See a, a wing as well. Yeah, so these four guys are really easy to get in. Before we do anything else, let's put a, a cheap goalie in. Something we always like to do. Uh, old mark 8300, not good enough, eight, not good enough, 84, 84, 84. And again, we don't usually have the projections set this early. Let's put in Logan Thompson, may as well, 7,500. Projects well enough. Now you have 52.75, and you could you could do whatever you want here, really. So this is, this is why Buffalo is going to look really good and also why they're going to be really popular. You want to make this into a five-man stack? No problem. You could play – I mean, you could almost play the Colorado guys. Let me, let me just see, just for the hell of it. Probably not really. So you play McKinnon. That's so expensive. Just – can't really do that, but what you can do is definitely play these Arizonans. We're going to start with that cheap defenseman. That being, who is it, Moser? They have 5,700 of man. I mean, what, what can't you do here? Let's see, what else do we have from Arizona? Clayton Keller, I and mean, we can easily fit him in now if we want. Um, so either another Colorado in a one-off or another Buffalo in a one-off. I mean, pick, pick your favorite, right? So let's see. Let's see what the – Zucker is on Arizona. He's a wing, so we can't do that. Actually, we need a center, right? So what center are we going to get? First Buffalo or Arizona guy wins it, I suppose. Let's see. We have Tage Thompson already. Dylan Cozens, he's in the second line. Let's use Schmaltz. I mean, he's at least on the correct line. So we'll play Schmaltz up over here. And, you know, any defenseman will do. And it's an easy build. Just to see what we got here. I mean, you can't quite do this because you can't have to have guys from different teams. Um, you play... Morgan Riley from Toronto. I mean, anybody really works. Save this for now, but we're not going to do this. Right, so let's go to Saberson and see what we get when we input our projections into the system. And let's mess around with a couple of different approaches. Let's um, first upload our projections. Boom, this guy's out, we'll exclude him. And let's uh, let's just fire it, put up 50 lineups. I might play 50, it's a big slate. How many do I have right now? I, I reserved, I think, 40. Maybe I will play. No, nah, we'll, we'll keep it at 40. You will play a couple of satellites though. Oh, I actually do. I'm playing a satellite into the world championship. So I gotta build I have to build something good. It's gonna be Buffalo. I mean, I don't want to mess around. Well, I don't think. How how could how could Buffalo not be the number one own stack? And how could it not be the best play? But then again, in 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 the kick save and in, in ME, it's not just it's not about the best play. It's about it's not what's gonna win, it's what's gonna win a lot. That's that's really what you're trying to accomplish in DFS. And what's going to win a lot more often than it should. I bet that. Is that fair? All right. So it's important to remember what we're looking at here. The first thing we're going to look at is the display of lineups rated by Saber score. And is here are these the defaults. It's a large slate. It's going to have between 10K and 50K entrance. And it looks as though. All the Buffalo guys are the top owned guys, as I projected. Followed by Colorados and Arizona. So let's just see the stacks. The team stacks, you get 58% Buffalo, 44% Colorado, and 42% Arizona. And all of this makes perfect sense. The other thing that you want to look at is your stack exposure. And it actually looks fairly pure. You know, mostly five twos. I don't think I want to play five zeros on a huge slate like this. So I'd probably X that out. 
nor would I want to play. I wouldn't want to play any of these funky, maybe a 4 2 2, but even still, I think that the slate is too big. Do you want to be just a little more pure? So let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. We'll keep the sixes, definitely. Hit apply. And what do we got? Um, you know, one, three, three, just to stick it in my craw. Now let me see what that looks like. Um, team stacks, 74% Buffalo, then Arizona. The next thing I'm gonna, I would want to do is I would want to increase the uniques to maybe three, to have three, you know, at least three different players in each lineup. And that actually moves Philly up the list a little bit, which is very interesting. And it moves Arizona down. So there's those Philly values that I kind of described earlier. Um, or it wasn't Philly, it was Chicago that I thought would get more love. I guess not. So, um, yeah. So the question is, is, is this, is this enough? Well, no, I mean, we really should run the contest sims to see what the difference is. Now let's first download these to our lineups just kind of as is. Wait, this isn't right. They're probably ready. Yeah. And we'll just save these just as normal. And then what we're going to do is we right click here, add contest sim, and it's going to upload the various uh, settings, meaning how many uh, entrance rates would be in these, in these contests, how much, how many people get paid for, uh, get paid, what percentage of the, of the prize pool is dedicated to first, you know, these things um, are used to create this field of lineups that they think the public will play and compare your 50 lineups, excuse me, your 5,000 lineups to those. And instead of ranking them by just by Saber score here, we can rank them by how they are, their, their, how their risk adjusted ROI is compared to those that field of lineups. So let's go ahead and do that. Instead of ranking them again by Saber score, we're taking the same 5,000 lineups and re-rating them by, well, did we do this yet? Oh, we didn't even uh, do the contest. We got to run this. So run contest sim. I have to say, I do like the way these look, but I mean, what we've, what I've been learning is that, especially in the kick save, using the contest sims is a very useful tool. I mean, it's a useful tool in all sports, but I think you get that, that strong incremental value, perhaps more so in hockey than any other sport. Um, I would say at least hockey and baseball are tied. I mean, that that's really what you're looking for when you're using the contest sense is something a little, not necessarily different, but that could be different from your regular, you know, regular builds. So let's see. Uh, in the kick save, when we re-rank these by risk-adjusted ROI, now we would be getting, okay, now all the Philly just comes up. So we'd be getting 60% Philly, 34% Islanders, and then not only 16% only Buffalo. Very, very interesting to me. Uh, now, as far as stack exposure, once again, we have to screw around a little bit. We'll take out the three twos. Uh, we'll keep the sixes in. And now we're kind of at a, at a at a crossroads, right? What do we do? Do we do we use the the contest sims or do we use the saber score of generated lineups or some combination of both? Um, and again, as I said, there's no real answer, but there's a little there's a couple of things you could do here. So first of all, one thing I will notice is that yes, I am getting 60%, but if you expand this the whole pool. Like they're only 6% of like the whole pool. Okay. But when you're taking the top 50 and you're then also sorting by, you know, uh, by risk adjusted ROI, it really wants you to play these. So you don't really, I don't think you have to play full 64% Philly. So what I'll do is I'll go back though to that other look, which was remember the large slate thing here right where philly kind of came up and you still got to play buffalo and colorado um 
So there's a couple of things you could do. You could play 25 of each. I think that that that's perfectly reasonable. So if you play the top 25, you'd get mostly Buffalo, Colorado, and Arizona. But then when you go to the other 25, you get mostly Philly, which I think is a pretty good combination. So why don't we go do that? Let's um, and the way to do that, by the way, is we'll put this in our favorites. So these 25 we'll put into favorites. And then we'll go back into the kick save risk adjusted ROI, which should be mostly Philly, right? We'll put those in as well into the favorites. And then what I think should happen is you should have probably 50 lineups. Oh, we only want to play 40, right? Ooh, who's out? Cam Talbot is out. So let's uh, let's get rid of him. So we actually only played 40. So we could just enter the top 40 in here. I think that's reasonable. So let's, uh, we'll go, well, actually only 48. So this is fine. So let's put in these 40 into the kick save. And let's take a look at which ones I'd want to play in, say, the big buy or the penalty kill or in the qualifier. Let's take a look. Um, in the penalty kill, if you sort by risk adjusted ROI, you're actually getting, well, I was about to say you're getting all these islands. No, you're getting Buffalo with Arizona with a couple of one-offs. Okay, this makes perfect sense. I don't, this is looks totally good to me. I'll put this one in the penalty kill. And then let's take a look and see if there's a lot of difference between that and, and the and the championship qualifier. I don't I don't imagine there would be wow look at that all these islanders wow well i mean that would be quite a coup if we can pull that off all right let's 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 rely on the sims for at least a little while and maybe we'll change it a little bit later but these are these are the these are the decisions that you're called upon to make you know like yes you could have great projections you could have a good lineup builders and then you have these and then you could tweak and then put on your cakes. And then at the end, you have to decide which is your best type of build. And uh, that type of thing is what makes this fun, honestly. So overall, uh, depending on what type of lineups you're playing, Buffalo, Philly, uh, Arizona, Colorado, those seems to be the main ideas for tonight. But again, more important is how we got to that. And hopefully you don't learn uh, and continuing to learn the process of uh, hopefully building and developing good lineups. That'll do it.